I'm Marty Stauffer. The wild turkey is one of our most American birds, though it mistakenly bears the name of a foreign country. It was common enough and so highly thought of that Benjamin Franklin wanted it proclaimed our national emblem. It nearly defeated the bald eagle in a vote by Congress. But the bird the pilgrims served as their main course in 1621 had vanished from Massachusetts by the mid-1800s. Overshooting, the clearing of its woodland habitat, and the loss of a staple food to chestnut blight made this largest of North American game birds one of the rarest. Today, the wild turkey has made a comeback. It's found in every state except Alaska. But what do we really know about our familiar Thanksgiving symbol? Let's take a look at this strong flyer, which prefers to run. This shy and wary bird with its flamboyant courtship ritual. Let's get more acquainted with the wild turkey. It's springtime here in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas. This oak hickory forest with an understory of dogwood and redbud is perfect wild turkey habitat. The lengthening days signal the start of one of the most colorful courtship rituals in nature. The females, the hens, watch as the males, called gobblers or toms, begin to parade. We'll return to these wild birds. First, let's visit a farm down in the valley. Let's compare the wild turkey to the turkey we already know. The domestic turkey gobbles all year long, rather than just in spring. Its head and neck are more covered with carunculated skin. The snood, which hangs over its bill, is much longer. It has a smaller brain and can only survive in captivity. Wild turkeys are large. Gobblers average 17 pounds, hens about 10. But domestic turkeys are huge. A gobbler can weigh up to 50 pounds. All turkeys started out brown, but in recent years, selective breeding has created the domestic white turkey, the bird we put on our Thanksgiving table today.
the turkey is the most important domestic livestock developed in North America. But our story is about a bird of a different feather, the wild turkey. It's far more alert. Its neck and legs are longer, and its body more streamlined. Adult males have a beard. The beard grows four to five inches a year and is up to a foot long on three-year-old gobblers. But because it only gets so long, it's not an accurate measure of age. It might look like hair, but the beard is a tuft of modified feathers. This hen has a beard, but only about one in 20 hens have one. These are Eastern wild turkeys, the bird the pilgrims served at the first Thanksgiving. The toms and hens spend most of the year apart and use a variety of vocalizations to locate one another for mating season. A gobble can be heard up to a mile away, but other calls can only be heard a few feet. This is a pulmonic puff. It's similar to sounds made by smaller cousins, the grouse. A receptive hen crouches to be bred, and a gobbler climbs on the hen's back to fertilize her. But the dominant gobbler insists on his right to do all the mating. These yearling males, called jakes, are usually chased away by the toms. But the yearling hens, called jennies, join in the breeding. The eastern wild turkey is one of the six subspecies which have developed as a result of varied habitats. Since two types are only found in Mexico, we'll be concentrating on the four types native to the U.S. The eastern, Florida, Rio Grande, and Merriam's. The eastern wild turkey is the most widespread. It lives throughout the entire eastern half of America. When the hens go off to lay an egg in their nest or to forage, the toms follow. The Florida wild turkey lives only in the Everglades state. It's the smallest of the four types. Except for size, it differs little from its cousin, the eastern wild turkey, which also has tail feathers dipped in chestnut brown or buff. Every flock has a dominant gobbler. The spurs on his lower legs indicate his age more accurately than does his beard. The spurs grow about half an inch a year. They also go from rounded at one year, to blunt at two years, to sharp at three years, to very sharp at older than three years. Nearly all turkeys live and die within five miles of where they hatched. But a foraging flock may wander widely. They feed in the early morning, rest, and sometimes take a roll in the dust in midday. Then they forage again until roosting time at sunset.
The wild turkey is most often found in hardwood forest habitat with grassy openings and plenty of oaks to supply acorns. However, the bird has adapted to a wide variety of habitats, ranging from wooded swampland to arid grassland, like here in western Oklahoma. The Rio Grande turkey lives from northern Mexico up through Texas and Oklahoma. Shorter legs and a cream-colored tail tip distinguish it. The Rio Grande is closely related to the South Mexican turkey which was domesticated by the Aztecs about 2,000 years ago. The Indians hunted with arrows that had feathers made from turkey quills and points made from turkey spurs. Apparently, they got tired of chasing the wild birds and began to raise them in captivity. The Spanish conquistadors took the turkey home with them in 1500. It became a delicacy, spread across Europe, and reached the table of King Henry VIII. It was mistaken for the African guinea fowl, which had been imported from the Turkish Empire. So, for a while, both birds were called turkey fowl. English settlers brought the domesticated version back to this continent. And so, our most American bird bears the name of a foreign country. Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona are home to the Merriam's turkey. Of our four turkey types, it has the whitest rump and tail tips, and thus looks most like the domestic turkey. Cougars are only one of the turkey's predators. It's also hunted by hawks, owls, eagles, foxes, bobcats, and coyotes. To protect all that delicious breast meat, turkeys have excellent hearing and eyesight. They're the wariest of all game birds. And though large, they're not easy to catch. The turkey can take off quickly and fly up to 50 miles an hour for a short distance. Like all four types, these Merriams remain constantly alert.
As many wild turkeys as we have today, we once had even more. When Europeans first arrived in America, there were an estimated 10 million wild turkeys. The bird immediately became an important food source for the settlers. This led to exploitation. As hunting continued relentlessly, These biologists with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission are building a blind as the first step toward capturing and transplanting turkeys. In 1937, Congress established a fund for national wildlife restoration, and wildlife agencies began widespread research programs. After years of trial and error, the turning point came with the idea of transplanting wild stock to restore turkey populations. But trapping the cautious birds was difficult. The use of a cannon net, powered by rockets or mortars, was a major breakthrough in solving this problem. Turkeys are baited with corn right up to the hidden net. While teammates run to get the truck loaded with crates, one biologist calms the birds. Untangling feet and feathers is no easy task. The birds are upset, but unhurt. The amazing adaptability of the turkey is what makes transplanting so successful. Also aided by hunting restrictions, America's wild turkey population has increased from a low of 20,000 to over 2 million. That's 10,000 percent in the last half century. It now lives in every state but Alaska. This hen being banded before release in a new area is part of an effort that is one of the greatest success stories in wildlife management history. Some early restocking involved crossing domestic turkeys with wild birds. It spread disease and may have polluted gene pools. Still, many a domestic turkey has been released intentionally to breed with wild ones. And some wild blood has been used to produce the so-called game farm bird, a crossbreed. 
Though it may resemble its wild kin, it has a larger body, a white rump and tail tip, and shorter legs. Its head is smaller, with a less pronounced dewlap and far fewer caruncles than the domestic turkey. But the game farm bird is not much better at surviving in the wild than is its plump domestic cousin. The real wild turkey is a far more graceful creature than either the barnyard or game farm breeds. Life in the wild keeps it more alert. Yet they can all interbreed because there is only one species of turkey, which includes all wild and domestic types. The wild turkey can live for 12 years if it avoids hunters and predators and if it can find food. Acorns are its main diet. A large gobbler may eat a pound of food a day. This is the feeding call. It's not used to call each other to food, but rather to keep the flock properly spaced. They pluck grasses and grapes, catch grasshoppers and beetles, and scratch for seeds and tubers. Their diet is so varied, it's almost easier to say what they don't eat. The squirrel is one of the main competitors for acorns, but turkeys will often find and steal their cash. The red-headed woodpecker has a better plan. It hides an acorn off the ground in a tree crevice. Another acorn eater is the tufted titmouse. And the chipmunk can carry off a dozen at a time in its cheek pouches. In springtime, the only thing more important than food is mating. The long center tail feathers identify this jake. And jakes do join in the fighting, especially when hens are near but a jake will usually not fight a gobbler. A tom with a beard approaches the beardless jake. The jake meets the challenge. Anything can happen in nature. In a reversal of the established social order, the jake drives the gobbler away from the hands.
During the last hour before sundown, a turkey flock finishes feeding and searches out a roost for the night. After flying up, they change limbs several times, then settle down and preen. Turkeys roost together for safety. Also for safety, they usually change perches nightly, but they may return to the same tree if other good sites are not available. There's much more to be learned about our largest upland game bird. Next time, we'll continue to study the wild turkey. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until then, enjoy our wild America.